Well, you know, so much has changed since I started my career. We used to do research on reefs involving things like uh, we were worried about people touching corals and kicking corals um, or understanding what signatures of water quality were laid down in coral skeletons, things like that, really esoteric stuff. And the stability of coral reefs in the 1980s and 70s, when I was first studying them, they were to be marveled at. Reefs were very stable systems, hardly changed at all. No one was even thinking about whether we need to study something like restoring coral reefs. No, coral reefs didn't change until they started to <laughs> through the 1980s, really. That all changed basically when, well, climate started taking effect, of course, but a big sea urchin die off happened in the 1980s, 1983. And sea urchins were, at the time, most important herbivores on the reef, keeping the algae from growing over the corals. As soon as they died from this mass epidemic that blew across the Atlantic in uh, 1983-84, algae started really taking off. And so everything's changed on coral reefs since then. And now we're in emergency mode. Reefs are in free fall, not just the algae overgrowth, but things like overfishing and generally overuse of reefs by people and all the chemicals added and so forth by that. Coastal development, too much tourism, all these things that are operate on really fairly large scales, island scale, let's say, or reef scale, increasingly started taking their toll on the food webs of the reefs, on the water quality of the reefs over the last, let's say, 50 years. So then when this mass die-off of sea urchins happened, the effects are amplified of all the other things that are going on on reefs at a time to stress them. So you got multiple stressors and just corals are cratering around the Caribbean. And then diseases started becoming more prevalent in the 1980s. Uh, people started reporting black band, white band, yellow band, white blotch, all these corals that were named by their colors, basically, and their patterns. Um, and it just added to their freefall. And then we start seeing climate change becoming more and more evident on coral reefs even more so than we saw elsewhere in the world. Of course, we hear about glacier you know, melting and all that. Of course, things are happening with climate change all over the world. But reefs, as I said, are really stable places. And when they become unstable, they die quickly. So climate change was starting to wash over reefs you know, like a, a burial shroud. It was just amplifying all these other effects. So what we really should have learned from the early coral studies was that letting water quality change in a way that kill them and coral reefs, they require stronger protection than other types of ecosystems, not the same. But we, you know, insisted on managing coral reefs like other places, and we could allow multiple use, human use to the extent possible. And, you know, we were basically asking, can we have our cake and eat it too? Could we still allow heavy use of coral reefs, not just heavy use, but growing uses? And since the 80s, we've ramped up immeasurable ways, coastal development, tourism, et cetera, to where reefs are now way overtaxed beyond what we even imagined they would be back then. But we insisted that we could manage human uses in a way that um, we could still have healthy reefs. I don't think we realized that we weren't able to control our appetite <laughs> and we've way overdone it. Now we're paying the price or really biodiversity is paying the price and what we see dying on reefs now is probably just the tip of the iceberg. I'm certain we're losing a lot more species on coral reefs than the ones that we're studying. And even more than we ever knew were there. That's a big problem because if species are really being extirpated, they're not likely to come back. If they're going extinct, they're not coming back. And then reefs will never be anything like they ever were in the past, no matter what we do. That's a problem. So to be honest, you know, I talk about how healthy the flower gardens are. I fear for the flower gardens because while they're healthy right now, even if we can control lionfish, an invasive species that showed up there about 15 years ago, let's say we can keep them under control, them and other invasive species. Even if we can keep algae growth under control, or it doesn't have the same effect that it has in other reefs because most of the flower gardens, other species are very healthy or if sea urchins come back and control it. Even if we keep the most destructive, 
diseases away from the flower gardens. We don't know if we can do that. But still, there's this dark cloud of climate change looming out there. And that's starting already to build and show its ugly face at the flower gardens. We're seeing temperature changes. We're seeing bleaching at levels we hadn't before. You know, most people believe in the next, the models are telling us, not just people believe, but the science is telling us that within the next 20 years or so, rising temperatures at the flower gardens are probably going to cause coral bleaching to happen at a level that is unsustainable. And the corals won't be able to recover between bleaching events like they do now. And if, if that happens, all bets are off about the health of the flower gardens in the next couple decades. So where does that leave us on research and management? I don't think it's hard to make a case that we need much stronger protection for reefs than we're giving them now. Otherwise, we're going to lose the rest of them. 